This morning I woke up and thought, what is the worst movie of all time? Like, factually, definitively, what is the worst film ever made? I spent many a minute pondering this question, eventually deciding upon Avengers Age of Ultron, which was literally the most dull two hours of my life. I would sooner spend two hours getting continuously ran over by trains than have to endure that again. Ooh, you kiss your mother with that mouth? But that was until I went to the IMDb list of lowest ranked movies, and sitting there right at the top was Disaster Movie. Disaster Movie? I thought to myself. I remember watching that as a kid and thinking it was sick. I probably watched it about 10 times when I was 11 years old and loved every single second of it. And when I say it's bottom, I mean it's technically kind of second bottom with Super Babies, Baby Geniuses too. But since that's a sequel and I won't get all the lore because I outright refuse to watch more than one Baby Geniuses film. What is your last word? Duck. <laughs> We're just going to go for disaster movie in this one. And there's also a load of weird and obscure films that have lower ratings that are for some reason not on this list, like The Amazing Bulk, for example. What the hell is that? Well, it ain't Barney the Purple Dinosaur. But we'll ignore those for now since they're not officially the worst sort of. Now, if you don't know what disaster movie is, first of all, get a grip and engage in some, some proper Western culture. <laughs> But Disaster Movie is basically a parody of uh, Disaster Movies. And it uses IPs from other movies to, I guess, make fun of or, or, or something. I don't know. It's been a long time since I watched it. Now, you may be thinking, Disaster Movie? Hmm? That sounds awfully like the other movie movies. Like Date Movie, Epic Movie, Scary Movie, Scary Movie 2, Scary Movie 3, Scary Movie 4, and Scary Movie 5. And you'd be absolutely right because they were made by the same people. Sort of. The two genius big brains behind Disaster Date and Epic Movie also have writing credits on all the scary movies. Now, these movie movies hold a special place in my heart. They are what I consider sleepover movies. Because when I was growing up back in the, the Stone Age in our fields, I'm, I'm about to turn 23. Kill me. These are what you watch when you go and sleep around your mate's house. It's, it's very nostalgic in a way to think back to them, especially the scary movies. But this is the first time I'm going to be watching disaster movie while being above the age of 12. So my perspective on this will almost definitely be different because according to IMDb, I was completely brain dead as a child. But before I get into watching this uh, apparent monstrosity of a film, there's like, well, loads of you that aren't subscribed to this channel and there's loads more people who are just seeing this channel for the first time with this video. How crazy is that? The first all to the new people, I just want to say, uh, he he hello, hello, handsome. I hope you are enjoying the video so far. Uh, if you are, then uh, I, I really appreciate it. If, uh, if, if you, uh, you know, uh, you know, press that, press that old, uh, the big red old subscribe button. You know, I think we could be really good pals if you did that. And even if you think you are one of the epic and legendary people that are subscribed, just double check because sometimes YouTube likes to unsubscribe people. All right, nice one. Cheers. Uh, now I'm, I am going to watch Disaster Movie. Wish me luck. I, I don't feel well. I mean, I, I still technically haven't finished watching the whole thing. There was a final musical number at the end, but I, I couldn't stomach it. I basically had to leave immediately as that started. But first of all, this isn't actually a parody of disaster movies. It's just kind of a mishmash of films from 2008 being parodied. It's going to be strong. I think the closest they got to referencing an actual disaster movie is maybe referencing the flat from Cloverfield. But even then, probably not. It's probably just a coincidence. So the film isn't about disaster movie. So what is disaster movie about? Is it about love, film, or the absence of meaning? Is disaster movie about the death of everything and everyone we love? To understand this highly important question, we need to look at the first scene, which is a straight reference to the hit 2008 movie, The Du- No, uh, 10,000 BC. Do you guys remember 10,000 BC, the classic historical action caveman blockbuster? Honestly, I, I didn't even realise this was a reference to 10,000 BC until someone pointed it out to me and went, oh yeah, that's a reference to 10,000 BC. I was like, you sure? Are you, are you sure? Are you sure it's not just like a, a setting. They're like, oh yeah, no, no, trust me, it's, it's 10,000 BC. Because honestly, that film had just exited my memory entirely. So that's the first spoof we're given, and, and the guy falls in, in shit! Which is actually really intelligent foreshadowing, because it actually prefaces what the experience of watching Disaster Movie is like. And then he screamed like a girl. <laughs> because, oh, uh, what, that's not what uh, big hairy caveman traditionally sound like. And then Amy Winehouse shows up out of the bushes and is a, is a saber-toothed cat and tells the caveman that the world is ending in 2008. And then she pulls the crystal skull from Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull out of her hair. And then they make fun of Amy Winehouse for being an alcoholic. This is three years before she died of alcohol poisoning, so, um... 
that aged well. So anyone who watched this movie past 2011 is immediately put off by it. But that 10,000 BC bit was all the dream of Will. A guy who doesn't want to commit to this girl he's seeing because he has commitment issues like the TikTok song. I have commitment issues. And he doesn't want to commit so much that he's completely fine with uh, a dwarf and flavor flav. <laughs> Ragging her next to him. And was, how, how didn't he wake up? And that's probably the most interesting this film gets. As you have yet to be desensitized to the onslaught of random and aggressively shoved in film references. And then we jump to a Sweet 16 party, which doesn't really resemble a Sweet 16 party. I mean, there's some balloons and there's an intro screen. But there's nothing about this that is really anything to do with Sweet 16. Like, most people making this film will probably play on the Sweet 16 bit and parody it. Because there's quite a lot to be done there, but they just, they just decide to not. And it starts off where Will goes up to a woman that he thinks is his hot girlfriend, but oh no, it is it is ugly lady. How embarrassing this is for him and how entertaining this is for the audience. He then talks to another lady, but oh no, she lifts up her top and is hairy. Oh no, how embarrassing this is and how entertaining this is for the audience. He then meets Dr. Phil, who for some reason is a, is a sex offender in this film. Do you get it? Because Dr. Phil in real life comes across as a relatively nice man. Like, it's, it's, not, it's not even funny. There's no joke here. They've just taken Dr. Phil and gone, lol, what if we made him a total creep. Wouldn't that be funny? Doctor, fill you up. There's no fucking joke here. And then there's a no country for old men reference. Who is this for? <laughs> the 12 year old target audience for this film do not know what no country for old men is. Or who Flavor Flav is. What? Where the fuck is he in this? And then we get a bit which is a parody of Superbad, but not really because they kind of just say what the characters in Superbad would say. Take it, take it, yeah. Like, I, I don't even know if you can really consider this parody. It's kind of just like looking into a portal into an alternative universe where Superbad is really shit. And then Kim Kardashian, who's also in this film, tells her boyfriend to shoot the, the boys from Superbad for trying to steal alcohol, which seems fair. And then Carmen Electra shows up and has a fight with Kim Kardashian that goes on for about a minute and a half. But what? It, it's, it turns out it's just a fantasy. Oh, that's so wacky and sick. But the fantasies in this movie are just as absurd as the non-fantasies, if not, like, the non-fantasies are more absurd than the fantasies. So you can't really distinguish between the two because they use the same logic. And then he does Wanted, because do you guys remember Wanted, the movie about the... Uh, the movie about that. Yeah, me neither. And a few minutes later, Will's woman shows up with a Calvin Klein model. There's not really any joke here. I guess it's just like, lol, oh, look, she's sleeping with loads of men and making him jealous. And then for some reason, start doing a high school musical out of literally nowhere. And there's a Soldier Boy reference, which is my favorite part of the film because I love Soldier Boy. He is the best rapper of all time. I love you, Soldier Boy. And then Juno from the film Juno, who as a character is meant to be 16 and pregnant, drinks loads of alcohol because you get it. Both 16 year olds and pregnant people aren't supposed to drink and that's funny because it's like the complete opposite of what she should be doing do you get it guys it's funny it's good comedy and at this point the apocalypse begins and we, we finally move on and that's the end of the party scene it went on for 14 minutes and we've been a film that's basically an hour long that's a lot of time to commit to one single scene and all this sequence has served to do is reiterate what we've learned from the previous two scenes oh and also the world is ending but aside from that we're just introduced to juno from the film Juno who plays a weirdly prominent role in this film. And other from that, we're just taking from shit parody sequence to shit parody sequence without anything to really bring them together. <laughs> Like, oh, let's look at Kim Kardashian wrestle Carmen Electra for a bit. Now let's do a high school musical bit where the protagonist sings about being gay. Now we're going to do a no country for old men reference. Like, there's no reason for it. It's like jangling keys in front of a baby so they don't notice you're clobbering their parents. But in this case, it's more like shoving references down the audience's throat so much they don't realize that literally nothing is happening. What point did this, this, or this Serve to the plot. It's empty and it's all being shoved in to hide the fact these fellas don't have a story to build their film around. Now, I could ignore all that stuff about, like, plot and it, uh, the film actually being about something if it achieved what a comedy sets out to achieve, which is being funny. But it even fails at that. Now, I must admit, there was one time I almost laughed throughout watching this entire film. And that was at this bit. Are you still coming to my Sweet 16 party? 
You're 25. Am I a big numbskull dum dum baby for almost laughing? Almost definitely. But other than that bit, which is really, really funny, and I'm not I'm not stupid for laughing at it. This film fails so bad at being funny, but it's instead horrifically cringe. Then we move on to the second act of the film. And if you think fuck all happens in the first act, then brace yourself because absolutely fuck all happens in the second. It starts off with a load of people running around because the world is suddenly ending for, for some reason. And they see Hannah Montana has been hit by an asteroid and she says some stuff, but I, I kind of zoned out because it goes on a bit. Keep rocking. The thing I noticed is from this point onwards in the film, it just gets really, really boring. And I'm not sure if it's because the pacing slowed down or whatever, or if my brain just short circuited and I could no longer pay attention to this shit. But past this point in the film, it just seems to really, really drag like a lot. But the main reason behind this dragging as far as I've been able to gather between states of consciousness while watching this abyss of a film, because from the point where the apocalypse started, the writers seemed to in entirely give up on the plot. I mean, there wasn't really much to begin with. Like, it was already incredibly loose at the beginning, but it semi-sort of felt like things were being set up. The crystal skull seemed important. The protagonist was having dreams that seemed important. But by the second act, these plot elements have dropped almost entirely, and the focus becomes sensitive around giving you a string of nonsensical disconnected gags Hello, lover. that aren't even funny <laughs> and another thing that adds to this general feeling of numbness is pretty much every time they're in a scene they just stood in a semicircle observing what happens and talking to each other as if they're stuck in some fucking two-dimensional shadow realm this literally feels like a year five christmas play and you can see in some of these scenes that they actually have some good locations and sets for like what this film is but when everyone's just standing Standing in a semicircle, not even interacting with the space they're in, literally just standing there and sort of observing, it ends up feeling like pure ambient. Realistically, this should have been a YouTube sketch, not a feature length film. If they cut this down into like a 15 minute YouTube shit post, it may be considered half decent for 2008. But dragging this out for an hour and 10 minutes. I mean, the official runtime of this is closer to an hour and a half, but the last 20 minutes is just some cringe song and credits. <laughs> so it could reach the minimum threshold for a theatrical release. There's 15 minutes of credits. Surely there can't be that many people that worked on this shit. Most of this is shot from one or two camera angles. There was more camera work and production put into E-Boys videos for fuck's sake. But anyway, uh, back to Hannah Montana. There's one bit in particular with this that creeped me out a bit. Let me just say, those totally sexy and utterly provocative pictures of me were leaked onto MySpace completely with my permission! Miley Cyrus was 15 when Disaster Movie was released. And I'm guessing this was put in there for shock value, but it's, it's just fucking weird. When I saw this, not a single part of me went, oh my god, that is so, so shocking and so funny. That caught me so off guard. That's amazing shock comedy. It was literally just like... Ugh. Imagine being 15 and a movie gets released in cinemas that portrays you like that. It's grim. It's grim. But then there's a Hancock reference for some reason that adds literally nothing. It just kind of happens like a family guy cutaway gag. Like it's literally just spliced in there for no fucking reason. I don't know why it was there. I guess it was just to get another reference in so they could put Hancock on the movie poster as if that as if that had helped. But then our protagonists hide in a warehouse and Juno fights with one of the women from Sex in the City and squirts milk on her because pregnancy I, I don't know i'm lactating moo and then will has another dream about being in the movie jumper because everyone remembers that movie about the man who jumps and then he gets killed by prince caspian from narnia 2 the narnia film we all remember <laughs> Everyone's favorite. I'm still talking about Narnia 2 to this day. And then Kim Kardashian just dies out of nowhere because I'm guessing that's all the time they paid her for. And then they come across the princess from Enchanted because once again, everyone remembers that one. And she tells them she's a homeless drug addict that lives in the sewers. Do you get it? Because that is like the complete opposite of what a Disney princess would be like. And then a prince comes out of the sewers and starts a two minute long dance battle in the middle of the apocalypse where no one knows how to dance and it's just kind of insufferable to watch. 
that you probably notice I'm using the sentence and then quite a lot at this point. And that's because I, I can't describe this in any way. It's just stuff happens. But then we get a sequence of Marvel spoofs back to back. I think the only reason they are in this is so the filmmakers feel as though they can justify putting Iron Man, Hulk and Hellboy on the poster. They then get hit and respond to being hit in different ways, which is, I guess, comedy. It's a lobster claw. And yes, even when there's a devastating hurricane or, or tornado or whatever the fuck, I, I can't even remember. I, I don't even care to remember at this point. And our characters are clinging onto their lives. They, they still stay in a semicircle. <laughs> but we are given a tasty morsel of plot. When Will discovers that his girlfriend has been pierced by a statue and will die if he doesn't get to her in a allotted period of time. This is where we run into Alvin and the Chipmunks. Where they're, they're, they're Alvin and the Chipmunks, except they're evil. Oh my God, how unexpected and surprising for the audience. It's because they're supposed to be like friendly little critters, aren't they? Now, I know what you're saying. And yes, this scene is bad. But despite that, this is still the best scene in the entirety of Disaster Movie factually. It has our protagonists involved in real conflict. And for once, the stakes are not high because this is fucking Disaster Movie. But the stakes are sort of there because Will's female friend is now in danger and they have to fight the chipmunks who want to eat them because how, fu how funny would that be if the chipmunks wanted to eat us instead of be our friends because they're little friendly critters. So the protagonists then wrestle with the puppets, pulling funny faces, and they just manage to survive, except for Juno, who, who gets her spine eaten. So we're up to Act 3 now, and at this point, I'm basically an espresso shot away from punching a hole in my well-sick 55-inch TV. <laughs> because there is not an ounce of joy in any aspect of this tragedy of a film, or should I say, d disaster of a film? Ow. And I have been just completely depleted and mangled by the continuous spoofs and reference humour. <laughs> So anyway, the next spoof reference is Batman. And just to highlight how cynical this movie is towards the films it parodies, The Dark Knight had only been out for a month at this point. So nothing they actually do with Batman in any way seems a reference to The Dark Knight, other than doing an impression of Christian Bale's raspy Batman voice. Would you want to watch me? With myself. Which is a joke that even thick skulled locker room boys would be able to come up with. Other than that, Batman just acts like a pervert, which didn't really stand out to me the first time I watched this film because everyone in this film acts like a pervert. But that's the primary failing with Disaster Movie. It wholly consists of references to different movies, which all just get piled together into a meat grinder. And if you have Batman in your film, why, n why not also bring the Joker in? Why just have Batman? That could be a reference to any Batman film. How are we supposed to know that's the Dark Knight other than the voice? But there's, there's three of those films. So like, if you're gonna bring him in, why not bring the Joker in? It just seems like a wasted opportunity. And the same goes for the other film references. Like, if you're gonna do No Country for Old Men, why not bring in the detectives and have them try and hunt him down throughout the movie? So you actually, you know, have something there. Like, it's not enough to just have the princess from Enchanted eat glass and say she loves drugs to consider what you're doing an interesting piss take. You're just getting people who hardly look like the characters to behave in ways that have nothing to do with the characters you're spoofing. Whilst incorporating no other elements from their specific franchises other than the way they vaguely look. These are barely spoofs of the things they're spoofing. They're literally just people in costumes that barely look like the characters. So anyway, I'm gonna quickly just go through the last 15 minutes because I can't fucking bear to analyse anymore. Uh, so the princess shoots Speed Racer. Yeah, I don't, I don't fucking know either. And she has a gun apparently which she could have just used on the chipmunks but didn't apparently. And they get to the museum from Night at the Museum and they try to knock Will's girlfriend out so the taking the thing out her shoulder is less painful and then she pulls the crystal skull out of her vagina because lol vagina and then they fight Beowulf and the whole joke at this point is that Beowulf is gay we can go back to my place I Tebo dancing with the stars Results show. I, I don't know. I don't fucking know. And then they fight Kung Fu Panda, who acts nothing like Kung Fu Panda. And this is also based on the trailer since it was only out for like two months before this film was released. And then Indiana Jones shows up, but oh, what? He's a, he's a dwarf. That's funny because in all the Indiana Jones films, he's not a dwarf. That's that's so, that's so, such clever humor. Oh, and he's also a pervert, like fucking everyone in this film. And then they get married, and there's a reference to Love Guru, which is even worse than the actual Love Guru. 
Guru somehow. And then at the end, there's like a five minute long song about everyone fucking each other. I'm not joking. There's a five minute long song at the end about everyone fucking each other. And it is awful. I still haven't sat through it all yet. So, I mean, how, how do I even wind down this video? Disaster movie is bad. It is. And it's bad in a way that few movies I watch have been. But why is that? It's not like there aren't other movies in the same style of disaster movie. There's basically a whole genre of cinema dedicated to it. But out of all of them, disaster movie is the least liked, lowest ranked, and most mind numbing. And the only reason I can find is 2008 was a pretty shit year. Now listen, disaster movie was already a bad movie, even in 2008. But now in the future, where we are now, 2021, the vibe is just cringe. The main films they spend time spoofing from that year are just completely forgettable. Like there's probably about three or four films that are actually like highly recognizable from this. Like you've got films like 10,000 BC, Speed Racer, Enchanted, Hancock, and Wanted. And the films that actually did become classics like The Dark Knight and maybe like Kung Fu Panda to an extent do nothing of value in disaster movie story. Actually, as a matter of fact, not many of the characters in general do anything to do with disaster movie story. There isn't really much of a story full stop. Like the whole thing is kind of just like a, a YouTube rewind of 2008. And you kind of just sit through this whole thing wondering to yourself how millions of years of evolution and development in the arts and sciences led to this until you realize no one who was involved in disaster movie even cared. All they wanted to do was put Batman on the poster and get in a bit of cash. And that's why Disaster Movie is my least favourite movie and gets my exclusive patented Memeulous Bad Movie Award. Well done. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, this is something quite new. I'm not, I don't think I've really done anything like this before. So if you do enjoy it, then please do let me know and I, I will I will happily do it again because I like this. I, li I like making this video. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in a bit. Bye bye.